What was that rock bottom? How did that feel like? I felt like everything was falling down around me, right? It was just mm -hmm. like I couldn't get out. I was stuck in this pattern of terrible eating, you mm -hmm. know, like not moving. I was I was dealing with gout. I was wondering yeah. why, like, I, my knee hurts, my ankle hurts. Yeah. I can't I can't walk. There was periods of time where I was going gout attack after gout attack, and, and I'm still dealing with my brother. You know, like his recovery. It, it was it was a year for him. It was a year long road, and then right after yeah. that, she gets diagnosed with breast cancer, and you know I'm still dealing with you know custody and my ex wife, and yeah. and I'm still dealing with my son and how school looks for him. Yeah. And on top of that, the business, you know, we're, we, my family business, we have a, we have a lot of stresses and, oh, yeah. and I'm coping, my coping mechanisms were absolutely ridiculous where I'm coping with food, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the whole entire world was on top of me and I had nowhere to go. Right. It was yeah. just like, I needed a, I needed to uh, do something. Right. Yeah. So, you know, it's just like backs against the wall. You have to fight. Mm -hmm. in, in, in all that, mm -hmm. right? It's a lot of emotion. Mm -hmm. Can't express it. You know, this is the reason why I needed to make the change. Mm -hmm. It's the reason why I needed to seek help. Mm -hmm. Seek outside. Seek outside myself for that help. Because mm -hmm. what I was doing wasn't working. Mm -hmm. I needed something new. You know, I came in and saw, saw you, and it was like... Yeah. Losing 100 pounds is a monumental achievement, but doing it one time, two times, and three times is unheard of. Today, I got a good friend here with me, Stephen Hart Lauer. He's an entrepreneur, a father, and blessed to say he was one of my clients for quite a long time. But today, we are sharing his crazy story, one, sharing his weight loss transformations in terms of what he's learned, the strategies, the adversities. And I'm really excited because to be pretty transparent, we shot this once already. Yeah. And there was a lot of technical errors in terms of things didn't render through. So I was really sad about that because that was an amazing talk. But I wanted to share this component because I called you that day and I was like, oh man, he's going to be so mad at me. Like I'm, I'm, I'm going through the edits yeah. and this is literally what you said. As soon as I said that, I like, I'm freaking out for like an hour. I'm trying to find all the footage. And then I call you and he's like, it's all good, man. Let's just do it again. Yeah. And I'm like, man, he really is completely a different person from where, when I met you. And, um, there's something that, that kind of stuck to me as soon as he said that the obstacle is the way and the way you're responding to circumstances now is an entirely different thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think your story is that. Every obstacle you've used as a weapon, and I'm, I'm really excited to go over the three separate times you lost 100 pounds. Yeah. Again, welcome back, number two. <laughs> this time, we're going to get this one down. Yeah. So welcome back, man. Thanks for having me, yeah. You ready to do this? Yeah, you're to do this again, yeah. Okay, so let's start. <laughs> let's. I want to start out the first time, yeah. right? The first time we lost a hundred pounds because every part of your journey, you've learned a lesson and you've applied that lesson to the next journey and so on and so forth. So let's talk about the first time. Where were you at initially in terms of your weight that first initial time? Well, uh, at the first time I lost the weight, I was at my absolute biggest. I weighed 320 pounds, right? Okay. I was 26 years old. Mm -hmm. Um, I was young. I felt like, you know, I was never going to, I didn't, I felt like, you know, my health was, I didn't have to worry about my health at the time. Right. So yeah. somehow I blinked and I was 320 pounds and yeah. I was just like, you know, I was like, how did I get here? Right. Mm -hmm. So the first time I, I just was just not feeling good. I didn't like the way I looked. Mm -hmm. Right. So the first time I, I lost the weight what I did was like, I went in, I was just like, I need to lose this weight because I want to look good. Right. Yeah. I was 26. I was like, I'm just, how did I get this big? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it happened quick. Cause I, you know, I was young. So, and, uh, the first time I lost the weight, I just did it with just crash dieting. You know, it was okay. the very first time where I, 
where I, where I was paying attention to what I was eating and yeah. paying attention to what I was eating. I was like, you know, versus eating like a triple from Wendy's, I was like, I'm going to eat or Cheerios. Right. Yeah. Cause you know, I thought, you know, I was sold, I was sold the, I was sold that, you know, low fat this and low fat that. It was just like, okay, well, I'm going to start eating, eating this stuff. Right. Yeah. As I started eating more and more processed foods, I guess, mm -hmm. um, it wasn't really working. So I just started stopped eating. I was crash yeah. dieting. So, so what's crash dieting? Can you describe kind of what, what you mean by crash dieting? Um, yeah, crash more? dieting to me was at the time I was eating like 800 calories a day. Okay. Um, we're just, we just wasn't eating. I was basically starving myself. But it got you know I lost the the weight the results yeah. were on the scale as opposed to what what were you eating before the oh, I would I had I had even I had no idea what nutrition was at all like I didn't yeah. care what calories were I never looked at the back of a label yeah. at all I had no awareness yeah. to what I was eating yeah. so what that was was I'd go to you know I had a I had a blue collar job so I'm like in my shop working and all I'm doing is, you know, I go to lunch and I go to Wendy's and get a triple mm -hmm. cheeseburger, which is huge, large yeah. fry, large soda, mm -hmm. you know, drinking Dr. Pepper, big Dr. Pepper and getting a refill. Okay. You know, I don't even know how many calories that was in one sitting. And I did that for breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack in between all those meals as well. Oh my gosh. Okay. And yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty bad. It was McDonald's. It was four by fours from in and out. Yeah. Even six by sixes from in and out occasionally that I've done, you know? Okay. Um, McDonald's and no care for anything. It was just fast food. Yeah. So you went from this massive caloric output into yeah. just 800. What were you eating? What was the 800 calories you were eating? Well, they, at the time it was, like I said, it was like just I bowl, of, bowl of cereal. And that's it for the day. Yeah. It was it for the day, you know, thinking that oh that gosh. was like, that was good or, yeah, or like some of that, or it was just like my, my, my wife would have just made up some tacos and we'd have tacos just one meal yeah. you know just some turkey tacos or you know she did cook at home occasionally but you know that we both we the first weight loss that we did we both lost we both went on the journey together mm -hmm. so we we were both eating terribly and then we both started dieting together mm -hmm. so that was how we kind of like we we got there together we, right. we, we were doing it in the household together and yeah. uh you know we both lost a lot of weight that first time and that's kind of how it happened, you know, but yeah, I was just, you know, I was just eating nothing healthy. I wouldn't say that it was healthy at all. It was just, mm -hmm. it was my first time just paying attention to calories and, and just not really even calories. It was just paying attention to what I was eating as far as like, I'm just not going to eat. Right. Okay. I'm just like, I can't eat what I was eating. Cause that's, that made me big. So here I go. I'm going to, I'm going to lose weight. And I, with that first initial, what kicked it off was I was in a three X shirt and they mm -hmm. weren't fitting. So mm -hmm. I was like, I, I'm gonna, I gotta, I don't want to go into a four X shirt. And I was like, you know, I was not okay with how I was looking and that's just what triggered that. Mm -hmm. So I just stopped eating for a couple of weeks and I was like, Oh, I lost 15 pounds in the first week. Wow. You know? Yeah. And that just kicked it off. And so, and once you saw, saw the motivation and I was young, 26 yeah. years old, you know, you ride this it, wave. As soon as you cut the calories, if you're, if you're, there's a, there's a deficit in the calories yeah, and you're that big and you're that young, you're going to lose weight right off the right. bat, you know? So as long as you don't keep up what you're eating and yeah. that's kind of where I, that was the very first attempt at weight loss. And that's, that was the very first time I lost a lot of weight. And then that time in seven months, I lost 110 pounds oh doing so. Oh my gosh. So you went from 320 to 210, the lowest, wow. the lowest I've ever been. Yeah. Okay. So I'm glad you shared that because a lot of times people are not even aware mm -hmm. of the amount of caloric input they're, pit, they're putting into their bodies. Yeah. And then we're like, I'm just going to shift by not eating. Mm -hmm. And if I don't eat, then I'll lose the weight. And it seems reasonable. It seems logical, right? Just like, I'm just going to cut it down. And then there's this point where it becomes addicting, addicting in terms of like, man, I lost 15 pounds. I'm just going to keep going. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to keep going. What did that feel like? Were you like, you feel good the whole time when you were losing weight or were you like, were you just gritting your teeth? Were you just saying no to things? Like what was, what was that experience losing that first hundred? Well, the first, you know, it was, it was exciting. Like I said, it was the first time that like, I was even aware of what I was eating. Mm -hmm. I, before that I didn't care really. Right. It's just like, it's something, you know, we just, 
it's never been a thing. It's never been like paying attention to what I was eating. It's just never, I was young. I was just eating what I, what I wanted. There yeah. was no repercussions. I was, I, I felt good, you know? So yeah. as far as, as far as like physically, I was, I was overweight, but yeah. I was just, I was able to eat what I wanted because my metabolism was going, but I was eating well over what that, that was. Yeah. Did you get hungry at all? During, during oh, yeah, cutting was, that that low, yeah, I was hungry all the time. Yeah, oh gosh, um, okay. <laughs> there was also times like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie either. There was times where I'd go to this this ba- this vegan bakery that was here in yeah. town that's no longer here. Where they they claim that their cookies were these six cookies were 160 calories, right? right. Mm-hmm. And I go I go there and I stop by there and eat them all. Come to find out that they were like, you know, someone someone had tested their cookies and come to find out that they're actually like six or seven hundred calories. Oh my gosh. You know, but okay. I would eat just those cookies just for a meal. That would be that'd be it. For that'd, the day. For the whole day. Or I'd eat a piece of cake. That was the whole day. Yeah. Like, you know, and that that was like I was like I'm allowing myself to eat once a day. And if it was that or, you know, mm-hmm. some other, you know, a bag of chips or I eat some chips with the cookies. Yeah. You know, as long as I'm eating, as long as I'm not eating a, a terrible amount, then I'm just going to lose the weight. And that's what I did when I lost the first 100 pounds. Dude, and here's what's crazy. I think a lot of people just do that. They mm-hmm. just focus purely on the caloric input and output yeah. and nothing about composition at all. And then they lose the weight. And it's and it's and it works. Yeah. It really does work. But then what they don't notice is it's not really changing the composition of their body. Right. They, you have tendencies to overeat in certain times. Like, did you have, did you have moments where you're like, I'm so hungry. I'm just going to eat a lot, like binge eating, like tendencies by cutting that for that long. Um, binge eating. I think I, you know, when I was in, when I was cutting, when I was, when I was losing that weight the first time it was, there was no binging at all really. Oh, cool. Okay. The binging happened after After you lost the hundred, after I lost the hundred. Wow. Yeah. I, um, that's where that came into play. I went to Hawaii mm-hmm. after I lost that weight and I was the mm-hmm. lowest I ever was. Mm-hmm. It, I was in Hawaii and I wasn't even like, I was upset because I felt like I was, I was eating and I didn't yeah. want to eat. Right. I yeah. was scared to eat because I lost a hundred pounds. I'm like, now I'm in Hawaii celebrating yeah. my weight loss with my ex-wife and we're, we're celebrating and I'm like, what am I supposed to eat? You know, like I didn't want to eat anything when I was in Hawaii that entire, like I felt, I felt like I robbed myself. And then when I came back, yeah, you know, I was just kind of like, why am I doing this? Mm-hmm. You know, I was afraid to eat again. Wow. And then, um, then when I started eating, I started eating again, then I just started binge eating. Like once yeah. I stopped, I couldn't, you know, once I started, then I couldn't stop. And the next thing you know, yeah, you know. I put a, I put all the way back on. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Okay, so what's binge eating like? What's a, what do you mean? Binge eating would binge be eating? like Halloween time. Okay, you know, just yeah. five, not just one Reese's. It's Reese's, all, you know, a whole it's, bag. It's, it's a whole bag, or yeah, a, 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 you know, just I, I'm a big sweets guy, so for me it was, it was just if there was brownies, it's the whole tray of brownies, or mm-hmm. Oreos, it's a whole pack of Oreos. You know, that's binge eating, I and mean, it was whole Oreos, pack of Oreos. And then a bunch of, you know, Snickers, yeah. little fun size Snickers on top of the cake, on top of this and on top of like, you know, a, yeah. a, a Wendy's three by three, you know, a, a triple, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's, that's what binge eating was to me. It was midnight eating too. I, you know, I'd wake up, uh, not we even wake up. I like sitting there in bed and just get up Start and go to eating. the, go to the pantry and eat. Yeah. Okay. So you lost the 120. Mm-hmm. How fast did you gain it all back? So that was in 2013. I, mm-hmm. um, my ex-wife got pregnant with my son, mm-hmm. and uh, she gained the weight during her pregnancy. Right, and I, I gained it with her. You know, okay. Uh, at that point, the diet was completely out of the window, so it was about a year and a half. Okay, where I was the same pretty amount. much back to where I was completely at. Okay, 320 back there again. Yeah, and then, and then what? When then? And then when did you shift again? When was this? You're like, okay, I'm big again. Like, I got to change it up. Well, because because I there was no there was no habit changes really. Um, the first time around, there was really no habit changes. So the first time I lost the weight, you know, as soon as I started eating the way I was eating again, it just bounced right back. Right. So, you know, my ex wife gave birth to our son, and he's like five six months old. And mm-hmm. a, a couple of my friends, 
I, I'm here now. I'm here back to where I was. Yeah. And a couple of my friends, they joined a, a local gym. They had a six week challenge thing. Right. You know, six week, twenty pounds in six weeks, and it's yeah. free. Yeah. You know, and and uh, a group of me and a couple of our friends, we we did the challenge. And that first challenge I did, I lost, I lost like uh, thirty six pounds in that right. first six weeks. And I rolled it over into another six weeks. So I did another six week challenge. And in that time, I, I lost another six, I lost another like 30, 30 pounds, oh, 32 wow. pounds. Okay. And that was the second time. So that's 2015. Mm -hmm. And what that was, was that was diet and nutrition. They put us on a nutrition plan mm -hmm. and I follow a nutrition plan. Right. Cause now, now I'm aware of, you know, that I can lose the weight. I can do this. Yeah. Right. And now I need to follow a more structured plan. And on top of that, now we're going to work out, you right. know, now we're working out because I'm going to the gym with my friends, you know, we're doing like circuit training, you know, yeah. we're just doing a lot of Tabatas and stuff like that. And just, you know, going around the room and, you know, giving each other high fives and feeling good about what we're doing. Hey guys, we are finally accepting students in our weight loss academy. In this program, we are teaching you the skill set, the mindset, the tool sets to be able to not only lose weight over the next 12 weeks, but keep it off for a lifetime. If you find yourself struggling to shed pounds or you're regaining the weight after dieting, this academy is designed for you. Now click on the show notes below so you can join our wait list and you will be the first to know when our curriculum begins. Now back to the show. Peace. Yeah. I feel like that first initial stage, it was just purely just caloric in, caloric out. Yeah. And then the second stage of you losing the journey is not only cal calories in and calories out, but like the, the composition of the calories is important now. Mm -hmm. You're starting to understand like what a protein is for the first time, yes. what a carb is for the first time, yeah. what a fat is for the first time. And then now you're, you're being introduced into this level of fitness. Mm -hmm. There is a correlation to, to, to those things. I think that made you very successful initially was – you had some form of accountability, like a community. Mm -hmm. You, the first one was with your ex-wife, and then the second one was with a group of friends. How how important is it when you're doing a journey to to try to include somebody in? Oh, the yeah. I mean, it's a, it's big. Like when I was in high school, I did, played baseball, and I you know I haven't worked out. I didn't work out from that point until I started losing yeah. weight in two, 2015, and. Um, you know, I, I tried, I had a gym membership. I went to the gym by myself and mm -hmm. it's hard to get motivated. It's, you don't know what you're doing. You're scared. You're intimidated. But when you go with a group of people, you know, I, I, I like a coach telling me what, well, this is the workout. This is what we're doing. Right. This is how we're doing it. This is what you're doing wrong. Here's the corrections. Like, you know, that was the first time where I, I was like, you know, group classing, group classes for me is yeah. what I like. I like the group, group setting. I like, you know, the camaraderie of the place. The community is obviously a big deal. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and when you feel, when you feel like you're a part of something bigger than yourself, you know, it's, it's, it's easier to, to pick up that shovel and dig your own hole, you know, or yeah. put, you know, hold up your end of the log because it's like, we're all here together. We're all doing it together. That's so important and yeah. critical. Yeah. Okay. So the second time around you're, you're doing the fitness thing now mm -hmm. and you're doing the nutrition thing. You're losing your about You're about to hit your second hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. How long now? How long did that take? That was a little longer. Okay. Um, just because it was, it, the nutrition was a little bit more, I was eating more, Yeah, you know, it was the first time where I was like, okay, I'm eating this food and I'm still able to lose the weight mm -hmm. for me. That was, it was something new because when I was the first time I lost the weight, it was just, you know, I'm just, I'm not going to eat. Yeah. Second time it's like, okay, we're going to lose this weight, but you're, you're going to eat while doing it. Wow. You know, and okay. that was something that I learned in that second weight loss journey was mm -hmm. like, you know. Don't feel bad eating to 20, 2200 calories, you know, or, yeah. you know, somewhere in that ballpark, you know, it, it's, you know, it's like, we're, we're setting this up for you to succeed and you follow the meal plan. You come into the gym, you come into the gym four days a week and you follow what we're telling you to do. You're going to lose the weight. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was the first time where it was like, it, I was scared. Like, are, are you sure type deal? You know, is, is this oh, really going to yeah. work? So in that time it took about. It was closer to 10 months to a year, I think, okay. with a time where I actually got to my lowest in that yeah. second 
journey. Yeah. Um, so got, three or four months longer. Yeah, three or four months longer. Yeah, yeah but okay. it was not crash dieting. It was working out. But I had, yeah. like I said, I was, I was at that point, I was 29. Mm -hmm. And I had, uh, you know, I, I was still... I was still young, you know, it was still all basically all aesthetic. It was just like, I wanted to look good. Yeah. You know, I just didn't like, I, I didn't like that. I gained the weight back. Mm -hmm. I felt ashamed that I gained the weight back. Mm -hmm. So that second journey, it was, you know, driven by like, I just wanted to get the weight off again. Cause I, right. I felt like I failed myself. Yeah. I want to bring up something cause they brought it up that I think not a lot of people talk about. Mm -hmm. You went from a place of not eating, and then now you're going from a place of eating 2,200. Like, where did you get the faith to be like, okay, I'm going to listen to this, but even though I'm so scared. I feel like so many people in their weight loss journeys do it wrong the first time, mm -hmm. and then they have this, this, this relationship with being scared of food. So you're, you're forced to eat 2,200. Mm -hmm. How did you eventually be like, okay, I'm all in? I'll listen to it. Or was it always like, I don't believe it's going to work. I don't believe it's going to work. What was that? Well, I, I think that that happened really early on in that challenge because it was like the challenge is like, you got to eat this you, much. You know, you got to eat this much. The coach is like coaching us through it. Like you stick to the meal plan. There's a, there's a meal plan with it. And if you, if you do this, you're going to lose the weight and our method is proven, yeah. right? We have all these pictures on the wall that shows the fact that that is the truth. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. You know, I'm not, I'm not liking that because the yeah. way I know how to lose weight is that I don't eat. Right. right? And, uh, it yeah. worked, mm -hmm. you know, um, the first time it worked. So the second time it was just like, okay, like I'm, I'm going to trust the process. And it happened pretty quick. Cause yeah. I, I mean, the first week I was eating, yeah. nor I was eating like a good, healthy, balanced diet and yeah. working out. And then the first week, I think that first week I lost like 15 pounds. Yeah. You know, it might've been water weight exploded. or whatever. Yeah. But it was just, it was, it was like, okay. You know, I was like, I'm, you know, that was the first time I was, you know, supplementing with proteins and yeah. supplementing, you know, and taking vitamins and, you know, they, they have, you, we're doing fish oil, we're doing different things. It's all part of the program. It's like you're, you're, you you know, do the supplements and as long as you're following what we're telling you to do, the weight, will, right. the weight will come off. I think there's something very important about that. Like noticing, I know the pictures are a great marketing tool, but then the person telling you is like, Hey, do we do it all the time? I think it almost simplifies it and it brings this like layer of a little bit of comfort going into it that it's normal, mm -hmm. right? And and oftentimes people will get try to get an advice from maybe someone that hasn't gone through it. It just doesn't have the same weight. But when someone's like, do you just follow the plan? I got you. If it falls apart, it falls apart. But for the most part, it works every single time. Mm -hmm. And no one really talks about that. Do you get a sense of comfort knowing that this guy was like, dude, just follow the plan? Yeah, uh, there was for sure because it's just like, you know, those coaches there, a lot of them have been there. They, mm. They've gone through the program or they, you know, they've all, most of them, There's there was a couple that yeah. didn't know the journey. Mm -hmm. And those are the ones that were like, they, they, you know, it's it's really hard to, to tell somebody how to lose weight if you've never you're been through the it. journey. Yeah. You know, as far as like how I, how I, how I felt. So, you know, there's a, there's a, these, this one, this one coach there that I first get there and I make this connection his name's his name is tommy right and i'm like mm -hmm. i was like i knew a tommy lopez back when i was in in yeah. school come to find out it's the same kid oh me and, wow. him, me and him were the we and me and him were the two biggest kids in our class in the fifth grade yeah and we reconnected and now he's a coach this kid you know yeah. he's lost all his weight he's skinny looking guy he's like yeah. buff ripped and you know and he's just like we made that connection i i was like a lost connection yeah from middle from elementary school right and yeah. he's like i've been there you know i was like i know i remember you were the biggest dude and yeah. i was the second biggest dude in right. school you know so um you know he'd been there he he knew that journey and also i knew him from previous so you know he was the one that was telling me like this is what we're doing and and i i was just like he's done it he's been there he's been in the trenches so i'm gonna listen to what he's saying yeah you know and and that was a little bit of the the motivation too was to be completely honest is yeah was that connection which is huge yeah. and i think it's like that's one of the elements like who, who do i who, like who should i part with right ally with that's gonna allow me to help me in this journey mm-hmm it's just, it makes it so much easier when you go through it with someone that's done it, right? Multiple times or has helped a lot of people multiple times because mm -hmm. you need that. It's scary. It's scary to lose the weight, especially if you've done it one way where, where it worked really well and then you're, you're doing it an entirely different way. Mm -hmm. 
So, okay. So you lost the hundred pounds. What triggered your next, your next like gain? You, you gained another, you, you're doing this again. So what happened? So at that point I was going to that gym for, you know, I was at that gym for like two years. Yeah. In the middle of all that, my son at this point, he's, he's getting a, you know, we're taking him to the doctor and we we were suspecting that he might be autistic. Mm -hmm. Right. And my ex-wife kind of lost herself in that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, at, and we started going to the doctor for his diagnosis mm -hmm. and, uh, my ex-wife and our relationship was falling apart because of the diagnosis. And, yeah. you know, she ended up cheating on me. Mm -hmm. And in, in that I stopped going to the gym and mm -hmm. I coped with food Yeah, and I just started eating. Yeah. I eat it, started eating and eating and eating mm -hmm. and, it didn't stop until I gained the weight yeah. <laughs> back again for the third time. Yeah. Yeah. So you have, this is what's really interesting, right? We do it initially. We were doing it the first time with caloric input, the second time with calories and fitness. And then the third time you gained it, you had this, an abundance of stress come in. Yeah. I mean, you're also an entrepreneur. We eating like the entrepreneur stress is really high too, right? Yeah. So you had a diagnosis of, your son being autistic, your wife, and then you have all these other things that are happening on a daily basis, mm -hmm. right? And it really starts to expose the other side of this thing, which is like the mind and the stress and how are we coping with it? And many people will, will gain their weight because they just don't have things around it. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about like this is when, this is the healthiest you've ever been, mm -hmm. right? Now you're doing what changed? Like what, how did you lose the third, how did you lose a hundred pounds the third time? Yeah. Well, how that happened was, is I was in a really bad place. Right. Um, and then after my ex-wife and our divorce, I, I had a girlfriend, you know, and, mm -hmm. and I just kind of, you know, she didn't really like, she just kind of supported me eating. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there was, we went through our bad time. And we were just our ups and downs and everything. At that point, I'm still the biggest. I'm still back up, you know. And she doesn't like me losing weight because you know she she just didn't want to see me lose weight. Mm -hmm. And I was we're going through breakup and getting back together and breaking up and yeah. getting back together. And mm -hmm. and then at that time, my brother got sick. Yeah. And he almost he almost died right because he had he had a health thing with his esophagus. Yeah. And that was the first uh, like put life in perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, right after right after that, you know I you know our family dealt with like a near death experience and my brother spent twenty seven days in the hospital. She is. And yeah. we were trying you know that was like I was like you know we got to take care of our health right and then shortly after that with my ex girlfriend we're going back and forth breaking up and getting back together she gets diagnosed with breast cancer okay, and, and all that, you know, just all of it was all on one time is all on top of me. And I felt like I couldn't do anything. Yeah. You know, I, I, I had to, I was at that point, I was suicidal kind of, yeah. you know, suicidal thoughts at least, you know, and I had to make a change and I wanted to be there for my son. Yeah. You know, I, I'm still, I, I need to make, I wake up, I need to do this again before it's too late. You know, I don't want to be dealing with this or that. I want to do, I, I need some, do something that's in my control. Yeah. So I, I, I seeked a therapist. I ended up finding a therapist. Powerful. And, you know, I started working on my mind. I was like, I gotta get, I gotta get my mind straight because where I'm at was in a bad place mm -hmm. and it wasn't helping. It wasn't helping my weight loss. It wasn't helping me as a father. I wasn't able to cope through my the loss of my marriage. Yeah. I wasn't able to cope through what my, was happening to my brother. You know, I wasn't able, it was the first time I felt like, you know, where life was real. Yeah. And then my ex-girlfriend, you know, had cancer and I was there with her through all that, you know, through all her recovery and stuff. And she, you know, she was cancer free and it was just like, I need to do something. Yeah. And, uh, you know, my therapist, we talked about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. She really helped me out mentally and you know, she, we were talking about weight loss and talking about how I really want to get back into it. And, and she, she is a CrossFit, she has a gym herself. So right. she, she's like, never talked to me about her personal stuff. Mm -hmm. She goes, have you ever heard of CrossFit? And mm -hmm. I said, no, I, I mean, yeah, of course. You know, I, yeah. I, I did some boot camp training. Yeah. I know CrossFit. 
She goes like, well, I like, you know, it might be something you might, you might like because you, you know, what you've done in the gym in the past and you might like that community. She's like, you know, you don't have to come to my gym. She's like, I just would like to see you try out CrossFit, you know, find something that's convenient for you. Yeah. And, um, that's when I first came across like the closest gym to my shop, CrossFit Mounds Head. Yeah. And, uh, I came across you. I walked, I, 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 first time I did it, I pulled up and I drove away. Mm Mm-hmm. I uh, walked inside. No one was at the front desk because there was a class going on. And mm-hmm. I, I turned around and I left. Mm-hmm. And then a couple of months went by. And then I was, you know, I was talking to my therapist and I finally pulled the trigger and I called. Mm-hmm. And you called me back. So yeah. I came in and met with you on a Saturday. It was I, I talked to you on a Friday. It's like, I'll be there tomorrow morning. And we sat and talked. Yeah. Yeah. It's so good. So one, thank you for sharing that vulnerable moment of being so stressed. I can't imagine my brother going through that, a divorce, autism, all of these things are happening. This is like, what was that rock bottom? How did that feel like? Because I feel like that's when really things start to change. And I think this is when we're the most vulnerable, but I feel like we're the most sponge-like to ask for help. Yeah, that's really what it was, yeah. So when was it, like, what did it feel like? Because I, 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 man, I think it's such valuable. And there's a lot of people that listen to this podcast in general that yeah. might be in that stage. Yeah. Well, I just, I felt like everything was falling down around me, right? It was just mm-hmm. like, I couldn't get out. I was stuck in this pattern of terrible eating, you mm-hmm. know, like not moving. I was, I was dealing with gout. I was wondering yeah. why, like I, my knee hurts, my ankle hurts. Yeah. I can't, I can't walk. There was periods of time where I was going gout attack after gout attack and mm-hmm. and and I'm still dealing with my brother you know like his recovery it, it was it was a year for him it was a year long road and then right after yeah. that she gets diagnosed with breast cancer and you know I'm still dealing with you know custody and my ex-wife and yeah. and I'm still dealing with my son and how school looks for him yeah. and on top of that the business you know we we my family business we have a we have a lot of stresses and my job is I'm a very key piece to that. So mm-hmm. I'm going to work trying to pretend like I'm there. I'm yeah. there physically, mentally. I'm super checked out. I'm out and yeah. I'm coping. My coping mechanisms were absolutely ridiculous where I'm coping with food, mm-hmm. you know, and, and the whole entire world was on top of me and I had nowhere to go. Right. It was yeah. just like I needed a, I needed to uh, do something. Right. Yeah. So. <sighs> Appreciate you, man. Thanks for sharing that. And, and dude, like I, I wanted to share that because that was one thing we, why we connected really, really well right on that Sunday. I knew how much weight you had on your shoulder. And I think, I think people forget that this journey is tough. And we're, we're talking about it for an entire hour but that moment where you were so depressive and checked out and you're like, you know what? I don't even need to live anymore. It was more than a day. Yeah. Like we've had multiple discussions. Like how long have you been holding on to this level of stress? And it was months, right? Made cheese almost yeah. maybe even a year. It was quite a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I still deal with it. Right. I have the therapist. Mm-hmm. I see weekly. Mm-hmm. Um, I still talk about a lot of it, but it's just um, you know, it's just like your back's against the wall. Mm-hmm. You have to fight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Nah, dude, you're good, man. <sighs> Sorry, bro. No, dude, take your time. Dude. Um, it's just, it's hard. 
yeah. you know, in that, um, I need a second. It's still, yeah. It's bringing me back the first time we met. Yeah. All right. Pulling together. It's just, um, you know, I don't, I don't even remember where I was at, to be honest, but we'll just, just like in, in, in all that, mm-hmm. right. It's a lot of emotion. Mm-hmm. Can't express it. You know, mm-hmm. this is the reason why I needed to make the change. Mm-hmm. It's the reason why I needed to seek help, mm-hmm. seek outside, seek outside myself for that help. Mm-hmm. Cause what I was doing wasn't working. Mm-hmm. I needed something new. You know, I came in and saw, saw you and it was like, yeah. it was hard to see where yeah. I kind of let myself get, yeah. you know? And I came in, I couldn't even do eight, eight sit-ups. Yeah, right. I remember the workout. Yeah. You know, came in and it's just like, you know, I'm, I felt nervous about doing CrossFit. Mm-hmm. I felt nervous about, you know, just, just everything, mm-hmm. you know, at that point it wasn't, that's, at that point it wasn't aesthetic. I didn't care how it looked. Yeah. You know, I was like, I got to get out of this. Yeah. I don't know. You know. Sorry, hey, dude. Man. You ain't got to apologize, man. I appreciate you, dude. I don't think people get to see the other side when we train. Like, this is, these are... Yeah. I mean, you see me cry. I've cried in your office before. (laughs) Um, Dude, so, I mean, I'm running back because I remember you called me that day. And man, like the tonality that you had, like it's just pain. I don't come back on Sundays, by the way. Yeah. But I was like, I got to go see this guy. I think he's ready. Like, I feel like he's in so much pain that I'm going to go ahead and go in on a Sunday and have a conversation with this guy. Yeah. And dude, it felt like home, man. Because the way you felt in terms of your pain, I might not lost a hundred pounds, but I was there before where I was so checked out. And then I was like, this is, I'm supposed to be here. Yeah. Like, I'm just going to be here to listen to this guy and just hear his story out. Yeah. And I'm just like foreshadowing this like, transformation believe it or not i foreshadowed your whole transformation in that conversation yeah and i knew there's going to be a lot of times where i'd have to bring you back into the office and have these really really deep and hard conversations but dude i'm telling you guys like this guy's an entirely different person and uh it's like you've you've come to reflect on that and i don't think it's often talked a lot either that uh, seek for help yeah. I'm all about having a therapist. I'm all about having a life coach. Like you need a team, especially if you're you're at rock bottom. It's going to require a lot. Yeah. Yeah, um there was a lot there, right? So I was I had to do something. And you know, my therapist was helping me through all this, you know, mm-hmm. helping me through a now we're on a we're on a breakup, right? Mm-hmm. You going through that and life coaching with you and we're talking about different strategies and I'm, I'm getting my mind right. Right. Cause that's all it was like. I, I just was, I was sick mentally mm-hmm. and sick physically. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I just had to break free from those chains and I had to make a change yeah. and I, I committed myself. Like I'm going to personal train with, I'm going to personal train with you. Yeah. Right. I'm going to put this in. Yeah. You know, I have to invest in myself, mm-hmm. you know, I have to make the changes now because if I don't, then it's only going to get worse as life goes on. Right. Time goes on and you lose the, you, you keep the weight on and you're dealing with this stuff. It's, you can never heal. Yeah. Right. You have to retrospectively look at what happened. You have to look back at your life and say, what did I do wrong? How am I showing up in the world? Mm-hmm. 
how am I affecting the people around me? How am I affecting my son? You know, how am I affecting my employees? How am I affecting my the people I work with? Mm-hmm. How am I affecting the people I coach in yeah. my, in my, in the, in my, in my job, you know? And, you know, if I'm not showing up for myself, how am I going to show up for anybody else? Yeah. And uh, especially my son, you know, yeah, because he is artistic. I have to be, I have to be there for him. I have to be the version, the best version of myself that I can possibly be so that he can be, so he can have the best version of me so he can grow up, Yeah, you know, with, with the things that, you know, I'm not going to always be there for him, you know, so I have to make sure that I'm going to be there for him. You know, I have to be, make sure that I'm his voice because he, when he can't speak, you know, Mm -hmm. so I, it was, it was just such a motivating factor to like, I have to change my situation Mm -hmm. so that I can be a better parent. I can be a better partner to whoever that may be, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, what did I do? How did I affect the people around me? Mm -hmm. And, you know, working out a lot of, um, working it out here at the gym and, you know, losing the weight the third time. Mm -hmm. It's all about, it's all about the mental state. The reason why I kept bouncing back because I wasn't doing it for the right reasons or I didn't have all three components, right? Mm -hmm. Weight loss and lasting weight loss and just having a healthy mind is all three. It's, it's nutrition, Mm -hmm. it's fitness, and it's also mindset where you're at mentally, you know, how you looking at the world, you know, do you look at yourself? How do you show up? You know, how are you affecting the people around you? Yeah. You know, and that's what really affects, you know, the everlasting weight loss. I don't want to do this again. You know, it's Mm -hmm. like a thermostat, you know, you, you set the thermostat at 76 degrees and when you gain weight, you're going to lose it to 76 degrees. And when you lose weight, you're going to gain it to 76 degrees. You have to change the thermostat. Yes. You have to change your look at life and your thermostat. Like if you wanted, you got to change what you're doing because, you know, if you don't change where your, your set point is, you're never going to change, you know, you're never going to have any everlasting change. It's going to, you're just going to continue bouncing back up and down. Mm -hmm. You're just going to sit where you always sat Mm -hmm. and breaking free of that is, is making those changes that you needed to make that you actually need to make and change. So good guys, like unreal. This is just unreal. So my wife's not here right now, but he, she tells me all the stories when you guys are hiking. Mm-hmm. And you, when you said, I want to be that example, you'll often do things when things get really difficult in there and you'll tell your son. Yeah. You, well, what do you tell your son when yeah, <laughs> it yeah, gets I, really hard? <laughs> yeah. Well, when we're out hiking, mm-hmm. you know, I, t- I hike with the hiking club and, you know, I never hiked before as a kid, but when mm-hmm. I hike with my son, you know, I, I have to push him. I have to teach him things. So yeah. when we're out there on the trail and he's struggling, mm-hmm. you know, and he wants to turn back, I was like, you know, we can do hard things, right? We, we're going to push through this. We're going to get to the end of this. Yeah. We can do hard things because something that I've learned is that you can do hard things. I come into the gym and tell, tell you that, hey, I can't do that. You're like, I want you to do this. I'm like, I can't do that. You're like, yeah, you can. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, okay, well, you know, that was at first. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to have me do hard things. I'm like, well, I'll, I'll give it a shot, right? I can do hey, I'll, I'll try it. Yeah. And I learned that you can, you can do hard things. So I tell Carson all the time, I'm like, you can do hard things. Yeah. You know, just because it gets hard doesn't mean you give up. Like we're pushing through, we're finishing, mm-hmm. you know, and that's, that's, that's how I try to teach my son that because I don't want him dealing with the weight issues that I dealt with, the food, the food addictions that I've dealt with, the, the, just the, 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 the mental stuff that I never dealt with, you know, like I have the knowledge now mm-hmm. to give that knowledge to him mm-hmm. so that he doesn't struggle with the same things. You know, I get, I push him through things. I force him to do things that are uncomfortable because mm-hmm. now I'm t- I, now I know you can do uncomfortable things because, yeah. because it, it, you know, anything you put your mind to, you can, you can possibly give it your best shot. You might fail. Yeah. But as long as you keep doing it, you know, you're never going to truly fail. It's not, you're not giving up. You can't fail unless you give up. 100%. So when, so anytime I get a client, I study them. I study them so much. I was like, okay, how did he get here? Because he's lost the, this many pounds so many times. I got to know everything. And I started to understand that we didn't have a mechanism for adversity, like serious adversity. So while I can't handle that adversity for you, I often try to recreate it in the gym. Mm-hmm. There were so many times where you got injured. There were so many times where you had gout flare-ups. 
And dude, I mean, you can just speak <laughs> just just pretty honest. I don't think I let you out on any of them. No. <laughs> right? You were like, dude, I have this gout flare up. I can't even walk. He was like, cool, man. I'll see you in like, I'll see you in 10 minutes. You're like a cool, we're hitting upper body today. <laughs> yeah. For sure. I, cause I, I would use an excuse like, all right, I'm, I, I have a gout flare up. I'm not coming to the gym. Yeah. Royce is like, good, we're hitting upper body. See you in Yeah. Noon. Exactly. How impactful is that? Like, for me, it's painful because I know you're in pain. But I also know at the same time that I got to show you that you can still bounce. You can still do things when there's an obstacle in it. That's when I started to promote the, I was like, dude, we got to read the book. I think you're going to really love this book. Yeah. And that's really been this theme. Yeah. How impactful is it when someone's like, dude, no, you're still coming in. Yeah. It was, you know, I, you said you're still going to come in. I came in and you know what? We still got in a good workout and I was surprised yeah that i was surprised that i was able to do it right because some of your best workouts was when you came in injured yeah i came in on my knee scooter and you're like i need to take a picture of <laughs> <Yeah>. you <laughs> you know i'm having a full-on gout flare where i can't even put pressure yeah. on my foot and yeah. you're like all right we're gonna sit on this bench and we're gonna hit upper body yeah um we're just gonna do purely pull-ups and then i think that's when you started getting your pull-ups too yeah. all of a sudden you're like well i can't use my legs so yeah. we might as well try to get this done yeah right so dude <sighs> There's so many, there's so many scenarios there. So one, like we kind of just went right into the scooter mode. Like we didn't just quite lose a hundred pounds again, really easily. Yeah. We did this in an entirely different way. And along that path, you experienced physical pain, mental pain, injuries, because these movements were different. Your body is different. I fell on my bike and I hurt my shoulder. Oh yeah. So we had to adapt on that. Like yeah. well, in a person's weight loss journey, they're going to hit those marks too. Yeah. Right. What would your suggestion be when that person gets that injury? Um, you know, you you can when you you know there's still things you can do, right? Mm -hmm. Just because there's there's something and there just because there's an obstacle there doesn't yeah doesn't mean you give up, right? Right. You got to find a different way. You got to adapt with what it is. I made a promise to myself that I was going to do it. Right. I pushed mm -hmm. myself to do it, even though there was days I didn't want to come to the gym because I was in pain, Okay, you know, and there was different things going on where I was I, I was hurt because, you know, I was lifting weights for the first actually real weights for the first time ever. And, and it was all new to me. My lower, you know, I'm sore. Right. I've never, you know, lived squatting more weight than I ever have. And my legs are sore. I'm trashed. I'm dealing with a gout flare up, you know. Yeah. And uh I just, I just kind of push through because there's, there's still something you can do. There's yeah. adjustments you can make regardless of you're feeling good or not. There's mm -hmm. still adjustments you can make in the gym. So, you know, still get in a good workout to still, you know, get that serotonin release, you know, and that, that mood booster that comes with a, yeah. a good solid workout. I think some of your biggest character growth was when you came in those days. Yeah. I think that was the only time I was really a really hardcore trainer was yeah. in those days. The rest of the days is easy. I was like, let's just do these rounds, let's do these reps, easy breezy. Yeah, yeah in that in that adversity, like that's when I realized that's when I realized that I could do hard things. <laughs> yeah. took, you know, I, I say it to my son because I know it's to be true, but mm -hmm. it took me pushing through. Like you know, like it wasn't that bad. I can do this too. It's not. It's not. You know, it's not a death sentence because I hurt my shoulder. Right. Yeah. It's not. It's not. It doesn't mean we give up. It just means that we do it a different way. Yeah. And, you know, we still get the same results. What did that lead to? You just realized you did one hard thing, just going in. I'm just going to go in with my scooter and like at least exercise. What did that lead to eventually in terms of like your fitness? Because I feel like it's just gradually got harder yeah. over time. Did it give you like different narratives? You're like, what else can I do? Yeah. I mean, it, it, I mean, that, that type of mentality kind of bled into my life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was... I was reading a little bit more, you know, read, a, read the obstacles, the way the book, right. That you suggested. And, you know, I really took that to heart. Like when there's an obstacle, you, you find a, you find a way around it. You know, the obstacle, what lies in the way, what lies in the path is the path, mm -hmm. you know, that's the way, that's the way. So it's basically like when there's, when there's something that like, th that's inherently difficult, mm -hmm. you know, you can still do it. You push through it, right? Mentally, mm -hmm. mentally, physically, you know, it's, it, it's just, there's, there's always a way around it. Not, not the other way, not don't retreat, you know, mm -hmm. you just keep on going and keep on pushing forward. 
Yeah. That's where, that's where true success is. As far as I'm concerned is where you're able to push through it Mm -hmm. and you still see the results on the scale, you know, in, in the mirror, you know, mentally my, everyone around me benefits from, from that mindset where you know little things happen and things will happen in life you know yeah. you, but you cannot let things slow you down you know you got to anticipate that that things will happen and yeah. you know you just find a way around them you work it through you find you know just if you if you anticipate things it's not so much of a shock to the system when things do happen yeah your whole life is just that theme yeah. As I as we look back, it makes more sense. That's why I wanted to bring that up initially at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the first time you lost 100 pounds, it was like seven months. The second one was almost a year. The third time, how long did it take? I'm still on that journey. Isn't that <laughs> I say, amazing? I say, yeah. I, say um, I, I started in 2021 doing CrossFit. Yeah. Started with a therapist in 2019. Mm-hmm. And it's been five years with her. Yeah. It's been three plus years here. Yeah. And... What that is, is it's like, you know, I don't need the results right now, yeah. right? Because I'm losing the weight slowly. I know that I can come up and come down and I'm, I'm okay, mm-hmm. right? I'm able to know that there's different ways to do it. And yeah. I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm promised myself that I'm not, you know, I don't want to lose the weight that fast. It wasn't, you know, yeah. there's, there's, there's a lot to learn along the road. And I think if you're speeding from point A to point B, you're not picking up the lessons at each checkpoint. So good. You're not, you're not figuring, you're not uh, anticipating the setbacks that happen. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, I say all the time that weight loss is not linear. It's never just one way. It's never just up or mm-hmm. down. It's always, it's, there's going to be ups and downs. It's like, it's like a, it's like a circle yeah. or like a, like a spiral up and down every, you know, you're pro yeah. you're, you're making, you're making your way down, but you might gain some weight. You might come down, you might lose some, you know, so you're going up and down, up and down. But the whole thing is, is every time you make that adjustment, you're turning the thermostat down. 100%. Right? You're seeing myself, like I'm seeing myself, my self image of myself. I, I don't see myself as that big guy anymore. I see myself as where I'm sitting now and where I'm going. So good. I feel like people are, if you don't, like get the lesson from the initial problem you'll experience that problem again yeah and again and again yeah that's part right? of it too is i i tell myself too when there is an adversity i i, I go like, what can lesson? i what can i learn from this mm-hmm. you know what what is this trying to teach me you know versus trying to stray away from it or avoid it mm-hmm. you know facing it head on yeah you know what can i learn from this you know what are what are the lessons that that can be dove into, you know, and, and then unpack it, yeah. and, and you know, and just try to make the adjustments, you know, adjust the sales and keep moving forward. One hundred percent. Yeah. So this is like the longest you've been, and I don't think I've seen you yo-yo anymore. No. It's like it's very linear, which is very cool. Even with some of the crazy stuff you're telling me that's happening in your business, because you guys are being really, really busy, you're still adapting, mm. regardless. Yeah. So this is the healthiest you've been. What did you change now when you look at the scale, when you look at the fitness? How do you look at your nutrition? What are some of your new coping mechanisms? Like, How are you able to sustain this linear weight loss comparatively to what the, what the other two experiences were like? Yeah, um, what I do now is like I, I cope differently. Like I cope by going to the gym, Yeah. right? <laughs> And, you know, instead of coping with uh instead of coping with food mm-hmm. you know i I'll, I'll go to the sauna i, I do a lot of sauna and i listen to podcasts or i listen to audiobooks mm-hmm. you know self-help not necessarily self-help audiobooks but stoic audiobooks yeah uh, you know i've really gotten into stoicism mm-hmm. and just really you know i'll sit in the sauna for half an hour mm-hmm. you know if i'm stressed got a stressful day or i'm tense i'm feeling tight got a lot going on yeah. You know, if I can, if I can chart, if I can chisel out an hour to go and, you know, get in the steam room and the sauna and the, mm-hmm. the spa at the gym, then I, 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 I do that. You know, I, I try to outlet a different way or I'll spend some alone time, mm-hmm. you know, work on my cars, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll do what I can to get in, you know, just spend some time by myself mm-hmm. and kind of just reflect on what's, what's happening yeah. versus like going after some, a, 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 some food for coping. Yeah. 
I think you did another one that you reminded me because I'm I I just was like you want to go grab coffee and then you're like nah and I remember you you completely was like you gave that up too yeah I gave up caffeine yeah caffeine was a big one too where you know super sensitive caffeine and my therapist was like no caffeine how much you? caffeine do you drink and I was like way too much <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah I was addicted to Red Bulls I was drinking four I would drink four to six Red Bulls a day mm. yeah and then on on top of that I was drinking coffee too so. And, uh, yeah, I've been caffeine free since 2020. So yeah, it's been four years now. So you went from zero coping mechanisms. And, and when I talk to my clients in yeah. terms of learning how to do coping skills, there's really three big ones, right? There's a physical way, there's a biochemical way, and then there's the mental way. And you have all three now. Mm-hmm. One, we removed the caffeine cause it just tended to get you kind of overthinking, overanalyzed, right? The second one is getting some type of physical way to cope, to mm-hmm. reduce the stress, the sauna, exercise being one of them. And then the other one was the mental side, like learning how to consume other things aside from your own talk. Mm-hmm. You're like, you know what? I'm just going to go listen to stoicism. I'm going to listen to an audible. I think that's like the biggest things when – when we do these nutrition programs and fitness programs, it's really easy when we talk about like a squat program. You've done squat programs, you've done pull-up programs, and typically there's a point there where where there's a break. It sucks. It's really hard. When we're doing nutrition programs, the breaks are going to be some of these like points where, oh, we don't even have a coping mechanism for anxiety. Mm-hmm. We don't even have a coping me- mechanism for loneliness. And that's when we start to really – if you can start gaining the tools for some of those things, it really equips you to lose the weight, not only one time, but keep it off for a long time. Yeah. Right. So it's like, what, what's your, are you always looking for new mechanisms to handle stress? Like what's, are you chasing the weight again or what, what are you, what, what are the next goals now? Yeah. Right now I'm right now I'm, you know, back on, um, really focusing on my diet again. Okay. You know, um, cause I, the way I've been doing it is I, I, I take off 20 pounds, 25 yeah. pounds and I just been kind of sitting there maintaining, yeah. you know, just seeing where I'm at kind of bumping it, bumping the thermostat down one notch at a time, Yeah. you know, and, and I'm doing the same again right now, removing processed foods, mm-hmm. you know, not eating, not eating added sugars. Yeah. You know, cause that's really controls my gout. Right. You know? So, which you haven't had a flare up for what? I haven't had a I haven't had a true flare up since April of last year. So it's wow, been okay. it's been a year and a half since I've had a mm-hmm. a debilitating flare up. Yeah, where I couldn't walk for three days. You know. Um, yeah. So yeah, managing my gout is 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 number one. Yeah. I mean, it's painful. It's terrible. Um, yeah. I've ma- seen you. Yeah, managing that through processed food, you know, removing processed foods, drinking a ton of water, eating healthier. You know, I, I cook more at home and, and, and stuff like that. So my goal now is to get to right now. I want to get to like where I'm at, like two, 220. 220. 220 okay. is like my next milestone that I would like to hit. Um, yeah. I had set milestones and every time I get to those milestones, I kind of take a little break, sit in what's ha- sit in it for a little bit, see if I can maintain that. Become that person almost. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Okay. Self-image too because, yeah. you know, you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, okay, do you see yourself as that person or do you see yourself as the guy that's 320 pounds? Do you Powerful. see your guy? Do you see your guy there or where do you see yourself? Because I've only been small. I've only been – not as – I want to say small, but yeah. I've only lost the weight a couple of times and it's only been a couple of months here and there. Yeah. Like how do I see myself in the mirror? I don't see myself as that, you know? Yeah. I see myself as the big guy. I've been the big guy for my whole life. So that's how I see myself. So changing that image yeah. takes time. Yeah. You know, and, and it's a slow, it's a slower process. The you know, weight loss and change and habit change and it, you know, all everything that goes along with it. It takes mm-hmm. a long time to sit, reflect, mm-hmm. you know, think about what happened, sit in your thoughts, sit in what's happened, you know, yeah. reflect on what's on, on how you got there, yeah. reflect on how you're getting there. Yeah. And, and, you know, like I said, adjust the sales and yeah. stay the course. Dude, this is, I talked about this in the last episode. People undervalue the, the part where you're supposed to be just maintaining. Yeah. 
and you've systematically put it into your journey. I'm going to lose another 20 pounds. I'm just going to sit here. Yeah. And I'm going to look at myself. Yeah. Right? Because actually, it's really easy for you to lose 20 pounds because we know how to do it. Yeah. Right? I really think people undervalue the side where they're just supposed to maintain because there's so much, not only physical growth, but I think there's a lot of mental growth and mental acceptance in that little phase. Mm -hmm. And people just try to get to the quick weight loss again, quick weight loss again, but they haven't really quite shifted their identity. And I think that's why a lot of times people yo-yo back yeah, because they completely don't even know what, what they look like right now. Yeah. Yeah. Cause for sure going from, 320 down to 210 in mm -hmm. seven months that was a straight drop right it's like it's like you know being in an air being in a hot air balloon and dropping a rock yeah it's gonna fall and it's gonna bounce right now <laughs> get in that hot air balloon and drop mm -hmm. a feather yeah. and watch it fall right it's gonna take way way longer yeah. to do it because right. you got to enjoy the journey mm -hmm. right enjoying the journey see you know it, i think there's checkpoints that need to be hit yeah there's there's mental checkpoints that need to be hit to create the change to to keep the weight off mm -hmm. and and to keep a main maintain a healthier lifestyle to maintain a healthier mind yeah you know to be a better version of myself every day to show up differently every day so that i say all the time i'm the best version I, i'm the i'm the best me that i've ever been today I not agree. not yesterday yeah. you know yeah. tomorrow is going to be even better than today mm -hmm. and then everybody around me or, or, that meet me they're going to get the best version of who i am they're not going to get the the old version of me they're not going to get the depressed version of me they're not going to get the old the old steven you know yeah. they're going to get who i am here today and who i will be in the future and and that's how it is listen if you're trying to lose weight but you're just frustrated because you just can't seem to see any results we would love to help you out now we've been helping thousands of our athletes over the course of a decade by crafting personalized programs that are not only sustainable but also effective now if you're ready to transform your health click on the show notes below book a call with one of our coaches we'd love to help you out now back to the show peace so good i want to ask these final questions just yeah. in terms of perspectives yes Okay, old old Stephen and then new Stephen. I yeah. want you to really think of that. What does what did old Stephen think about the scale in the past, and what does old new Stephen? What's their perspective on the scale now? The scale. Back then, the scale was it really. <laughs> the scale was all aesthetic, right? We'll yeah. say the 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 scale is a representation of aesthetically. Like, I just want to lose weight to look skinny. Mm -hmm. I just want to be skinny. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't step on the scale that often anymore. Very, I step on it. Yeah. I step on it a couple, a couple weeks here and there, right. you know, cause I know my body's staying there Yeah. because it's all, it's more, it's more than just the scale, right? Mm -hmm. It's more than just the scale. It is mindset. It's how I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. It's how my gout is acting up. You know, how, how's that controlling? How's my son doing? How's my girlfriend doing? Yeah. You know, how, how's my business doing? You know, there's more to focus on than just the scale because, you know, the scale isn't the driving factor anymore. How am I close fitting? Yeah. You know, how, how's, how's that going to, you know, how is, how am I showing up? So good. And the scale is whatever. If I get there, I get there. You know, I, mm -hmm. like I said, there's the checkpoints, these small, small little 20 pounds here, 20 pounds there to get me to where I want to ultimately be. Mm -hmm. Cause I don't even know where I want to be. I don't know. Like, I can't say like, I want to get to 200 pounds. I can't say that is true or not. Yeah. Cause I might not sit at 200 pounds, you know, like I, I, a different, I, body. I a different body, but where am I at mentally? Where do I feel mentally where I want to be? You know, like, you know, where I can balance life where, where it's not too much. It's not, it's not, not enough. Mm -hmm. It's like a perfect balance of everything that I got going on. And you know, it's not obsession. I'm not obsessed with the scale. Yeah. I'm not obsessed with the scale like I once was either because the motivation is different. I'm glad you shared that because I notice a lot of the athletes that get extremely healthy, the ones that relapse a lot of time are extremely fixated on the scale. And that's like their God. That's It means everything. And then the moment it starts shifting its power into other things, it's still part of the variable, but it's not all of it. Yeah. That's when the person really starts to, sh to shape in so many different ways. Yeah. Okay. So now I want to add another perspective, the another perspective question, because in the past – 
food was scary. Yeah. Calories were scary. How do you look at food now? Oh, f- fuel is, uh, f- food is fuel for real. Wow. Okay. It's to nourish your body. I, I, I don't need to, I don't need to eat big. Mm-hmm. You know, I've, I've adjusted a lot of what I eat. You know, I, I eat a lot better, more proteins. Like I try to get in more proteins than anything else. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like if I want a cheat day, I don't even think about it. Like I, I know that I've just bounced back. It's just, just another yeah. bump in the road. Right. I, yeah. I can allow myself to, I can allow myself to eat and go out with my girlfriend and go to dinner or whatever. Yeah. It's, one dessert. It's, it's not going to, it's not, yeah, not going to kill you. Right. Right. Even if you have a bad couple of days, like I'm not yeah. going to lie that it and say that it's, it's every day. Yeah. There's been a couple of days where I'll eat ice cream a couple of days in a row, but then, yeah. then the next thing, you know, I'm back on it because it's just like, okay, I'm more in tune, mentally in tune, connected with my body. My mind body connection has never been more connected than now. In wow. the past, it's always been like, I'd never realized how food affected me, how I felt eating different things. Right mm-hmm. now, if I know that I ate something bad, I could feel it. Yeah. Right. Or my gout will tell me, my gout's like, oh, you know, the, yeah. the, gout, the gout goes like this. It's like, it's not an attack. It's a little flare up. Like, like I get a twinge of pain. Yeah. I'm like, okay, what was I eating? I recap it. No, yeah. you know, I'll pull, pull back. back. Yeah. You know. Oh my gosh. Okay. So one more perspective shift. Yeah. Adversities in the past. Old Steven. How did he look at adversities? How does current Steven look in terms of adversities? How, what's your perspective on that? Adversities in the past. Yeah. We're blow ups. I lose my yeah. mind. I freak out. Yeah. You know, I, I it was just, it was, it was everything. It, you know, if there was an adversity in my way, I didn't like the way that it was going. I did not like it. I, cha- I tried it, everything I could to change it. Mm-hmm. I, it was, whether it was in my control or not, I'm putting everything I can to change that adversity, mm-hmm. to, to, to change the situation, to change the outcome, to change what's going on, to change someone else. New Steven, it's like, I accept it for what it is. Mm-hmm. I look at it, see what I can learn from it. Mm. and then i i adjust the course right the op- what it lies in the way what lies in the path is the path yeah the obstacle is the way i love this episode this like whole perspective shift and guys if you're listening to this this is the reason why why i do this because of just this perspective of how things change because yeah. you apply what current Steven's perspective is into the, the past one, he would get to this body where he is currently. And uh, it's such a powerful thing, like the scale, the uh, how you view the food, how we view failures and struggles, all that stuff is intertwined. Mm. And when you really start to understand and grasp that and just start reflecting and being aware, and I think that's why it's great to have a therapist, yeah. to have to, like ways to reflect. You're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe... I'm learning this. Yeah. I think is really exciting. Yeah. My, I'll add that. My therapist, I, I say yeah. she, she saved my life. Mm-hmm. She truly did. Um, she turned me on to a lot of things and she questioned me on a lot of things and made me really look inward. Yeah. And that's hard. People don't like looking inward. They, yeah. they, they like to think everyone else is the problem, but Hey, yeah. are you sure you're not affecting the situation? 100%. So with your new perspectives, how does that, how is, how has it affected your your life outside of health just like, overall great yeah. you know i like i said the team i lead mm-hmm. at work I, I try to bring a good positive energy to, to mm-hmm. everything I, I try to bleed that off i i'm i'm teaching i coach people at work a lot yeah. better because i i understand or i i understand when somebody's having a hard day i've been there mm-hmm. you know and i'm able to teach this stuff to other people like obviously the best student is the best teacher yeah. Right. Once you, once you know it, you can teach it. Mm-hmm. And that's where I've kind of become with things. I try to, people can come to me with anything and I understand it. You come to me with some, some mental stuff that you got going on. I've been there. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I recommend therapists to everybody. Like yeah. everybody should have a therapist. Everyone should have somebody they can talk to that doesn't have any skin in the game. They just want to, you know, they're, they're, they're not, they're, they're there to just be a moral compass, mm-hmm. you know, to be able to teach you, what you need to do to be a better person. I, I, you know, I, there's a lot of days where I just talk her ear off and she just, yeah. yeah you know, yeah. and there's also some days where she checks me, mm-hmm. you know, and those are hard to hear. Yeah. So. Gosh, I feel like one of the final stages of healing is helping others. Oh yeah. Right. Sure. Like what, 
what does that bring you when you're able to, someone comes in with some type of adversity and then you're able to, to get them to spark a little bit? What's that like? Yeah. Um, you know, when someone comes to me with something, like I, I have a, I have an employee now that's yeah. dealing with some stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. And he's a big guy. Yeah. And you know, he's dealing with some back pain and he's going through some stuff with his, his, his lady. Yeah. And you know, I tell him all the time, I'm like, you know, you know, you should, you got, I've lost the weight. Let me tell yeah. you, like he, he, he's never done that. Mm-hmm. So he's lost like 70 pounds in the last year and a half. Get out of here. Okay. Yeah. I mean, big guy, Jeez. like 450 pounds, six foot five, like wow. big guy, okay. line, linebacker type guy. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, just because I've told him, like, I've been there, he saw my journey and I, I coach him through that. Like, if you need help, I'm there for you. Right. Mm-hmm. He's dealing with some stuff with his lady. I was like, I've also been there as well. Yeah. You know, he's dealing with the back pain. You know, he's, he's, been there he, he has a, he has a, he has a fuse L5 yeah. S1. I was like, I also have a ruptured L5 S1. Yeah. Like, I deal with this stuff every day. It's like, I, you know, yeah. so I, you know, he's, I'm able to coach him at work through work and through personal stuff because I've been there. Mm-hmm. I know what it takes. I know that there is also, I also know that there is light at the end of the tunnel mm-hmm. and that it's not, it's not as crippling as it, as it needs to be. Yeah. I tell him all the time when he gets worked up, but like, calm down. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. It's really not like we're, we're building signs. It's not a big of a deal. Mm-hmm. Like we're not, we're not saving lives out here. Like it's, it's okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and you know, you're just trying to teach that on him. And I suggest a therapist to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> everybody. It's like, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm going through this. I'm the, you need a therapist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you need a bounce back. You need to get perspective, right? Yeah. When you're inside that little jar, you can't see anything outside yeah. of it. It's so hard to see the forest from the trees. 100%. And uh, man, I'm seeing you light up because I'm playing this oh. all like I'm going backwards because all of your pain now you're like, ah, oh, now there's some purpose for this pain. Mm-hmm. And you're doing this for your guy right now. And he's losing 70 pounds and you're, you're guiding him through a really tough time. That's what I saw mm-hmm. when you came in on that Sunday. And I was like, oh, my pain is actually, it, now I can use my pain to be of purpose. Mm-hmm. Because when you came in, man, you were in a dark place. And I was like, oh, it makes sense. Yeah. Why I had to go through something like that. Yeah. Might not be the same the same kind of story, but it felt the same to me mm-hmm. where you were. Like there's just hopelessness, right? All right. So last, last final thing, last fi- final suggestion <laughs> for someone that just maybe, you know, they've lost the weight and they gained it all back. Or maybe they're... They're losing the weight and then now maybe they're stalled. Mm-hmm. What are some of your suggestions for that person? Yeah. Um, what I, what, you know, I've do, I've been there, right? So yeah, I call, I say, I say to people like I'm a professional yo-yo dieter. <laughs> yeah. um, I've done it a few times. It's mm-hmm. not, it's no fun. I understand it, but you know, I've never given up, mm-hmm. never given up. Yeah. There's been setbacks. There has been, Yeah. you know? You, you only you only fail if you quit mm-hmm. right if you give up that's the only way there is to do it but you know like it's it's a journey that you just keep on doing what you're supposed to, you know you you keep doing what you know you're supposed to be doing mm-hmm. and you keep doing it you keep doing it and eventually the results will happen because weight loss is not linear mm-hmm. it's it's not you know there's going to be setbacks and you just got to adjust and mm-hmm. keep moving forward you know i love it Guys, if you like that episode, make sure to share, make sure to subscribe. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up button. (laughs) Subscribe. (laughs) Right. Uh, Comment below if you have, if you loved a particular section or if you, if you had gained value from it, or if you have your own inspirational story, just put there. I think it'd be great. If you have questions for Steven, comment below as well. And um, Steven, where can they find you, man? Oh, on on, on social media? Yeah. (laughs) Instagram. I yep. have an Instagram of my weight loss journey. Mm-hmm. Um, Steven underscore weight underscore loss. I'll put on it Instagram. on the show notes. Yeah. Cool, man. Thank yeah. you for round two. Yeah. This time I'm going to check the rendering, make sure better, it's good. I think this is a better recording. Dude, it is. Yeah, way better, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm pumped, cool. man. Thank you Thanks. so much, bro.